Welcome to a lesson on linear dependent and linear independent functions. In this video, we'll define linear dependent and linear independent functions, and then use the Ronskian, a special determinant, to determine if two functions are linear independent. So we mentioned this in the last lesson, but if we have a set of functions f sub one through f sub n, the set is linear dependent on an interval i if there exists constants c sub one through c sub n, not all zero such that they satisfy this equation here, where we have a sum of multiples of the functions where the sum is equal to zero. And the functions are linear independent if they are not linear dependent. But in this video, we're going to focus on determining whether functions are linear independent or dependent using a special determinant called the Ronskian. So if we have functions f sub one through f sub n that have at least n minus one derivatives, then the determinant given here is called the Ronskian of the functions. And the value of this determinant can help us determine if the functions are dependent or independent. Looking at this determinant, remember the number of rows and columns must always be the same, where the first row will be the original functions, the second row will be the first derivatives, the third row would be the second derivatives, all the way down to the n minus one derivative in the last row. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on just having two functions. So we'll have a two by two determinant, where the first row will be the original functions, and the second row will be the first derivatives. So for example, if we have two functions, f sub one and f sub two, that are differentiable on a given interval, if the Ronskian doesn't equal zero, for some x in the interval, then f sub one and f sub two are linear independent on the interval. So if we can show the Ronskian doesn't equal zero for some x in the interval, we can quickly determine the functions are linear independent. And if f sub one and f sub two are linear dependent on the interval, then the Ronskian will equal zero for all x in the interval. But we still also want to find the values of c sub one and c sub two that satisfy the definition for linear dependent functions. And now the reason we care so much about linear independent functions is that if y sub one and y sub two are solutions to this linear second order homogeneous differential equation and the Ronskian doesn't equal zero, then y sub one and y sub two are called the fundamental set of solutions and y equals c sub one times y sub one plus c sub two times y sub two is the general solution to the differential equation. So to find the general solution, we need to find two solutions such that the Ronskian is non-zero. Let's take a look at our first example. Here we want to determine if the following functions are linear independent. So we'll start by calculating the Ronskian. And because we have two functions, this would be the Ronskian. So the Ronskian of f sub one comma f sub two would be equal to a two by two determinant where the first row would be the original functions. So f sub one is x squared plus two x and the second function is x squared minus two x. So our second row will be the derivatives of our functions. So here we would have two x plus two and here we have two x minus two. And now the determinant is going to be equal to this product minus this product. So we would have the quantity x squared plus two x times two x minus two minus x squared minus two x times two x plus two. Let's go ahead and multiply this out We'll have four products here and four products here. So we'll have two x to the third minus two x squared plus four x squared minus four x and then minus two x cubed plus two x squared minus four x squared minus four x. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. We have two x cubed. This would be plus two x squared minus four x. 
here we'll have 2x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x. Well, notice how we're subtracting here, so this difference would be zero, and so with this difference, leaving us with 2x squared minus negative 2x squared, which would be 4x squared. Well, notice that 4x squared is only going to equal zero when x equals zero. So this doesn't equal zero unless x equals zero. And since we weren't given an interval, we'll go ahead and assume the interval is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And this is enough information to determine these two functions are linear independent. Again, the Ronskin will not be zero unless x equals zero. So there are an infinite number of values of x in the interval where the Ronskian is not zero. So let's go ahead and make our conclusion on the next slide. Since the Ronskian doesn't equal zero except at x equals zero, f sub one of x and f sub two of x are linear independent. Again, because the interval was not given, we're assuming the interval is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's take a look at another example. We'll start by setting up the Ronskian. So again, we have a two by two determinant because we have two functions, where the first row will be sine two x and cosine two x. The second row will be the derivatives. The derivative of sine two x would be cosine two x times two, or two cosine two x. The derivative of cosine two x would be negative sine two x times two, or negative two sine two x. Now the determinant will be this product minus this product. So we'd have negative two sine squared two x, and then minus two cosine squared two x. Let's go ahead and factor out negative two. So we have negative two times sine squared two x plus cosine squared two x. And we should recognize this identity here. That would be equal to one. So we have negative two times one, which is equal to negative two. We'll notice how this is never going to equal zero. And because the Ronskian is non-zero, we know the given functions are linear independent. So again, since the Ronskian equals negative two, which is non-zero, the two functions are linear independent. Let's go and take a look at one more example. We'll set up the Ronskian. Again, the first row will be the functions, two to the power of x plus three and two to the x. The second row will be the derivatives. Here's our derivative formula, just in case we need the review. We'll have natural log two times two to the x plus three, and we'll have natural log two times two to the x. The determinant will be this product minus this product, so we'll have two to the power of x plus three times natural log two times two to the x minus two to the x natural log two times two to the x plus three. Well notice how these three factors are the same and therefore their difference would be zero. So notice how the Ronskin is equal to zero over the entire interval which we assume is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So while this is not enough information to determine that the functions are dependent, it would be logical to think that they are, but to verify that they are dependent, we do want to find the value of c sub one and c sub two that satisfy the definition. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. Again, because the Ronskian is zero over the entire interval, to show they are linear dependent, we want to find c sub one, where c sub one times two to the power of x plus three 
plus c sub 2 times 2 to the x must equal 0. Let's apply a power of property here and write this as c sub 1 times 2 to the x times 2 to the third. Notice how because we're adding the exponents, we can write this as a product with the same base, plus c sub 2 times 2 to the x equals 0. Well, 2 to the third is equal to 8, so let's write this as 8 c sub 1 times 2 to the x plus c sub 2 times 2 to the x equals 0. So if these two terms were opposites, this sum would be 0. So let's go ahead and let c sub 1 be equal to 1 eighth. Notice if c sub 1 is equal to 1 eighth, this would just be 1 times 2 to the x. And therefore, if we let c sub 2 be equal to negative 1, this sum would be 0. Let's go ahead and check this. If we have 8 times 1 eighth times 2 to the x plus negative 1 times 2 to the x, this would be positive 1 2 to the x, or just 2 to the x. Then we'd have plus, this would be negative 2 to the x, which is equal to 0. So we found a value of c sub 1 and c sub 2 that satisfy this equation here, which verifies the two functions are linear dependent. So f sub 1 of x and f sub 2 of x are linear dependent. So it is important to recognize that just because the Ronskin is equal to zero, we still do want to verify we can find the constants which satisfy the definition for linear dependent functions. I hope you found this lesson helpful.